Okay, so <clears throat> around your house, you might have some spices mm -hmm. like turmeric, or you might have some cinnamon. Any coarsely ground uh, spice uh, would, would do for this experiment. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the turmeric. Um, it's kind of a really cool yellowish color. And I'm going to spoon out just a little bit of it, maybe half a teaspoon or so. Now the powder, it gets everywhere. And you want to make sure you're doing this on a glass surface. So it can be, um, you know, a window uh, or a glass baking dish or something like that. It should be flat and it should be glass. And I'm going to add tiny little bits of water at a time, just a few drops at a time. Uh, and then I'm going to use this palette knife to mix the water into the powder. Now, the, the finer the powder, the better the quality of the paint. Um, so you, you, you don't want to use a really coarse spice, you know, like, like pepper or something like that. It needs to be, uh, it needs to be something really fine. Now, you add enough water, mix it in until it starts to get um, uh, maybe a little thicker than like pancake batter or something. Uh, you want it to be uh, smooth, um, but not too fluid. Now, if you add a little bit too much water, you can always go back and add a little bit more of the, the powder. And you just keep kind of mixing it in, mixing it in, swirling it around, spreading it out, mixing it in. You really want to do a good job of mixing it. Now, what makes one paint better than another paint uh, has a lot to do with the amount of powdered pigment that's in it, but also how coarsely ground the pigment is. The finer the particles of the pigment, the better the quality of the paint. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be smoother, it's going to apply easier, and it's going to have a more vivid color to it. So just keep mixing it around. Um, spreading it out. Now, at a certain point, you want to, uh, you really want to make sure it gets uh, ground down as much as possible. Now, uh, professional paint makers or, or people who, who do this for quality paintings will use sort of like a glass pestle. But if you don't have one handy, a really smooth rock um, will kind of do. And you want to grind down this pigment even more uh, doing figure eights. You might need to add a little bit more water to it. You want it to be somewhat fluid when you're doing this. The more you do this, again, the higher the quality of the paint. The finer the particles, the more fluid it is, the better it will apply. Now, this is kind of the foundation for all paints. They all start this way with a pigment, uh, finely ground, and just kind of thoroughly mixed together. What makes one kind of paint different from uh, others is not the pigment, but the binder that goes with it, the, the stuff that is going to glue it to the surface that you're painting on. For me, um, I'm just going to mix this up as if I were going to use it as a watercolor. So I really don't need to add a binder to it, but there are some things that I could add to make it a little more opaque, uh, maybe make it flow a little bit. Um, you know, if I was really doing this to create a high quality painting, I might use some gum Arabic or some uh, calcium um, or uh, some finely ground marble or something like that. Uh, there are some things you can add to the paint to make it more fluid. But I just kind of wanted to show you how this works. With watercolor, it's uh, dissolving the pigment in water allows it to soak into the watercolor paper. And there's nothing that's actually going to glue it to the paper. The, the pigments soak into the fibers of the paper and they get stuck there. So that when the water evaporates, all that's left is the pigment 
adhered to the paper because it's it's kind of stuck inside the fibers. So you can see even just something like this, you can create some really interesting colors. Um, it, it doesn't flow as nicely as uh, store-bought watercolors, but it flows, it flows well enough to experiment with. Again, the more you grind the pigment, the higher the quality of the paint, the better it's gonna flow. And there are some things you can add to it that will make it work better. I just kind of want to give you some of the basics of how this works. Now with watercolor, the more water you add, the more transparent it becomes. The more of the paper uh, shows through the paint, it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter, the more water that you add. Now, if you were going to make other kinds of paint, uh, you would want to add a binder to this. So for example, um, if you were going to make tempera, you'd use egg yolk. And it doesn't take very much, a little bit of egg yolk. It'll alter the consistency of the paint. Um, this would be like a tempera paint, and it, it becomes a little gummier. But it does apply thicker, um, does apply a little bit more opaque. Now, for if, if you want to keep it somewhat natural and you want to find a way to make it um, apply a little smoother, one thing that you can add is a little bit of honey. So again, it doesn't take much. You don't want to dilute the pigment too much, a drop or two. This will just kind of help with uh, keeping it fluid. Um, if this were going to be for a professional painting, you would want to put some additives in there to keep this from molding. Uh, but, you know, just for demonstration purposes, I just kind of want to show you a little bit about uh, how paints are made. Um, I'm, I'm not going to add a lot of that other stuff. I, I don't have it anyway. But you can see once you've added like the, the egg yolk, uh, the paint does apply thicker. A little more opaque. And again, if I had um, all the tools that I would need to really make a quality paint, I would have ground the pigments down much finer uh, and they would have been, um, it, would have, it would have applied much smoother. Now, if you were going to mix acrylic paint, you would want to use um, an acrylic polymer medium. Sort of, it, it's sort of like liquid rubber. Uh, if you were going to mix oil paint, you would be applying um, different kinds of oil, like linseed oil or sunflower oil. Um, different types of oil will have different drying times. So uh, it's something a lot of artists experiment with. That's kind of the basics of it. Um, there's a lot of really cool tutorials online for how to make paint. Uh, there's a few that I'll, I'll link to uh, Schoology that shows how to mix paint with uh, natural materials that you can find out in the woods, different kinds of rocks. Uh, there's another tutorial that talks about how to make paint using flowers. So yeah.